and welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. I've got an exciting one for you this week, as you might be able to tell uh, from what is in front of me. I am going to be building for you today the 9,000 piece Disney Museum puzzle by Ravensburger. I will lift it up here, but I will also put a uh, photograph of um, the poster up so you can see a little better what the picture is like. Um, in brief, it is a collage puzzle really. Um, there are two walls and the walls are full of gold framed uh, portraits of various Disney characters. And it's a lovely, lovely puzzle, I have to say. I have been looking forward to starting it for ages. Now, I hummed and hard for quite a long time about how to structure uh, the videos for this puzzle. And I was in particular um, uncertain whether or not to do this as one long video or as um, a two part series. Now, I, <sighs> I like the idea of doing it all in one because then you start the puzzle and at the end you have a complete puzzle and it's all very sort of neat and you know perhaps a bit more satisfying at the end um however if i were to do that with this puzzle this video would more than likely end up being around about two hours long which is just a little too long in my opinion i also asked a canvassed opinion about this um on social media and not too many people got back but uh, of the people that did the majority said that they would like to see this in two parts so this is part one of the 9,000 piece puzzle. And in it, I will be building um, the portraits in the puzzle. Um, there are, I mean, you might think, well, it is only portraits, but in actual fact, um, you have to kind of separate out the frames in this because the frames constitute such a huge part of the puzzle and the pile of puzzle pieces for the frames is just enormous. Um, there's also quite a goodly section of the floor uh, on the bottom right hand side and also the ceiling and the lights on the top right hand side and whilst they do you know they look small on the picture by proportion because it's such a big puzzle they are quite big sections of the puzzle. So um, for the first video I'm going to be putting together just the portraits themselves um, and for the second part of this video series, I will be putting together the frames, the lights, the floor, and all the green kind of turquoise wall area behind them. So, um, it's going to be slightly different to what I usually do. I mean, obviously, um, the 13,200 piece Disney Orchestra puzzle that I did was, um, a little bit easier to film in terms of kind of episodes because I did it in the sections so I was able to just do a section per video and just you had a completed section at the end of it so this is going to be different in that at the end of this video you will have a 50% done puzzle <laughs> but um, if you are you know just excited because you want to see the uh, the whole thing done um, then don't worry about that because I have actually uh, built more than just the portraits at this stage in the game and um, the second half of this puzzle video won't be long following this up. Um, it's not going to be ages and ages or weeks and weeks. I am plowing through the puzzle pretty well. Uh, I'm on the hard bit now but um, but it is coming together and I am I am further along than the content you will see in this video. So don't worry about it being a slow process or it taking ages for the second part to come. It will be coming soon. Um, right, so I'm going to stop talking at that, really. I don't need to do any unboxing today in this video. It's already unboxed. Um, I actually did a separate video on the unboxing of this puzzle. So if you haven't seen that, I'll pop a link in the description below and you can have a wee look at that. In that video, I open up the cellophane, just look what's in the box and I also um, mix the bags because this puzzle comes in two 4,500 piece bags and well if we're being precise it's 4,560 um, pieces but I decided that I wanted to mix the bags for this puzzle. I wanted to have a go at just doing a 9,000 piece puzzle and see if I could 
rise to the challenge of that. So um, in that video, I also mix up the pieces and open the bags and everything. Um, so I don't need to do that in this video. So what I'm going to do uh, now after this intro is just move straight on to the sorting and I'll go through the piles of the sorted pieces with you after that. So enjoy! Right, so at this stage of the sorting, I very quickly realised that I was going to need to get more organised. The piles were just getting really big and also really numerous, and I still had loads of pieces left. So here is what I decided to do. Is I went out to the shop and I purchased some um, sticky notes. And what I was going to do was write down the name of each picture and I'm going to lay them out on the table and I'm going to sort my piles according to pictures. Now there are 26 pictures on here so there will be a lot of piles but I think that that really is the way forward with this puzzle. I think if I just take it a picture at a time, a pile at a time, assuming I can be fairly accurate with the sorting, uh, then I think the whole puzzle will come together a lot more quickly and a lot more easily. It is going to require a lot of time on the sorting. I think the initial kind of just getting it all prepared to build. Um, and I don't like sorting. Let's be honest here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a big sorting fan, but I think that I will. Um, I think that I will be glad that I've done that uh, by the time it's all done. Right. OK, so. The sorting on this puzzle started four days ago, I think. I was looking back at my videos and photos of the first day that I did a sort, and it was the 17th of January, and it's now the 21st. It is taking a long time, but I haven't filmed all of it. A lot of this, well, about 90% of it, has taken place off the camera purely because there are just so many pieces and it's just so boring <laughs> sorting that I've done a lot of it sitting on my sofa watching TV. Um, but now we have come to the time when this box of pieces here is all I have left still to sort. That's it. Then it's all done. And when it is done, I will go through all the piles with you of which there are many, and some still that you can't see here. <laughs> so I might have a party <laughs> when I've done it. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, this is the last lot of pieces I need to sort. So I will film some of this for you, film some of the end of the sorting, uh, just, so, just so you've got an a sense of a beginning and an end to it all. But most of the sorting has taken place off camera. Um, so yes. <laughs> 9,000 pieces of sorting. It was the nightmare situation I thought it would be, in fairness. But again, I know, I know, I know, I know for a fact that I will not regret doing this. So I'm just so looking forward to actually starting and I'm so close. So here goes the last lot of pieces being sorted. I'm not sure if I'm going to be happier having finished the puzzle or having finished the sorting. I feel so happy right now. <laughs> I'm so glad the sorting's done. My goodness. Right. Okay. I'm just going to quickly go, go over the uh, the piles with you. These ones on the table are pretty obvious because they're all labelled. Each one is um, a portrait, as close as I can determine anyway. 
That pile there is Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Uh, forgive the <clears throat> tripod being in the picture. That pile there is what I could find of Jasmine, although that's quite a big picture in the poster and I think I may have some pieces elsewhere for the Jasmine picture, but they're the ones that were obvious to me. Uh, that pile there is uh, Tinkerbell and again same as with Jasmine her picture's fairly big I think that's quite a small pile so I'm sure that there are some pieces elsewhere of hers that one is the Dalmatians they were fairly easy to spot I think that pile's pretty pretty good uh, that's Mickey Mouse there we've got the Jungle Book there Snow White there again. That pile should be a lot bigger, um, but there were there were quite a few um, pictures, portraits where pieces were fairly similar, and I may well have pieces in other piles, but um, not all of them, uh, but one or two. So, and I've also got a miscellaneous pile which <laughs> probably has a lot of them in as well. But I'll get to that. Uh, that pile's Bambi, that's one of the bigger ones, um, but he was quite easy to spot the pieces for him. So again, I'm hopeful that that one's pretty filled out. That's Ariel, another big one. Um, her pieces were relatively easy to spot as well. These are getting, these are kind of overtaking each other. Uh, there we go. That pile there is Cinderella. Then we've got another big pile, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Her pieces were really obvious. And the only one that potentially I may have got her a little mixed up with is uh, Rapunzel, um, who uh, it has a similar style of picture to her and obviously has the bright yellow hair. So I may have a few hair pieces mixed up there. But uh, for the most part, I'm pretty confident that that's all Sleeping Beauty. That's Pinocchio there. We've got some pieces of the Aristocat there that pile is tiny and I think it's a pretty small portrait on the puzzle but uh, I there are very similar looking pieces in the Dumbo pile and I think again there may have been a bit of mixing up going on there that's Tiana we've got Captain Hook his pieces were fairly obvious same with Lady and the Tramp. The reason I could tell Lady and the Tramp was because there's really, the, the style of that painting is kind of like a Van Gogh, I think, with these really obvious brush strokes. So whenever I could see kind of a texture coming through, um, I was able to determine that it was Lady and the Tramp. That was one of the obvious ones where texture kind of had a role to play in that one. That's Pocahontas, that's another pencil drawing. Uh, very similar to the Dalmatians, but again, hers has a lot more kind of shading in, whereas the Dalmatians is more kind of fine lines. Um, so you could kind of you could kind of tell the difference with those. That's the Dumbo pile again. I believe there's a fair few aristocrat pieces, uh, aristocrat, aristocat pieces in that one. Um, but it's not so huge that you know I'm not going to be able to kind of sort that out while I'm building it. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. That's uh, Mulan, Winnie the Pooh, another really obvious one, very, very dotty. You could just tell straight away the Winnie the Pooh pieces. Uh, the same with the Queen of Hearts, um, Beauty and the Beast, Alice and the Playing Cards, uh, that was another pretty obvious one. Rapunzel, another obvious one again. She has that dark purple behind her. Um, but as I said earlier, the only ones I think I may possibly potentially have mixed her up with are the Sleeping Beauty ones. Just that bright yellow kind of blonde hair that they both have. Uh, that's Minnie Mouse. That one was fairly obvious as well. And that one is Simba. This tin here is full of edge pieces. Hopeful that I've got them all and not missorted any. There are a few that I found in the wrong piles that I've kind of put in the right pile, but oh, it happens to me every time. There's usually some that I missort. But anyway, they're all the ones that I could find. Now, I move on to the larger piles now. They are in separate boxes. They couldn't fit on the table because, as you can see, the table is full. Uh, so I'm just going to move you across here to my uh, dining table 
which has these pieces on. So I'll start with this one. This one, I'll kind of bring it under the light for you. This one is my box of miscellaneous pieces. Now, they're all mixed up and mishmashed at the moment. I will have to sort through them again and sort them out. But the reason I put a lot of these in here is because... Many of them were background pieces, so they were all just one shade of, say, blue or white. And I just simply didn't know which background to which portrait there were. There are some portraits with very similar coloured backgrounds. And I kind of figured that if I had a miscellaneous pile, as long as it wasn't too huge, which by comparison, this one isn't really, I figure that as I start to put these portraits together where there are gaps and where I'm picking out colours and patterns and I'm seeing a lot of gaps, um, then I will resort to this box and have a rummage through and hopefully be able to fill out a lot of those gaps um, with this pile. So this is my miscellaneous sort of, I would imagine it will be my kind of go back and forth, uh, pick at it sort of pile. So that's them. <clears throat> Right, uh, the next one I wanted to show you is this one here. I literally have pieces all over the place. Right, so these pieces here are all the pieces that I could find with um, the lights in. So any of these like kind of smooth white pieces or any, I mean, that's got a fair bit of picture frame in it, but you can see a bit of the light in there. Any that I've found like that, I've put in this pile here. Uh, this one here is bits of the wall, I think. Some of them may be portrait backgrounds, but they're all a sort of lighter shade of this turquoisey colour. Might be a little bit of frame on it, but they're mostly this of light turquoise. Um, that's a slightly smaller pile, but they are kind of the counterpart to... Ugh, they're starting to get bigger now, the piles. Uh, this pile here, which is, again wall pieces but darker and there are a lot of them um so that will be a bunch of pieces that i will be approaching last and probably um probably will need to kind of do another sort on those but try and do it by perhaps shade dark to light I don't really know quite how else, unless it's got a little bit of frame on it, I don't really quite know how else I'm going to differentiate those. There are a lot of the same colour in that pile. This pile here, another another bigger one, um, it's the floor. All the wooden floorboards. So again, that'll be another section I do towards the end, because um, it's one of the bigger piles of pieces. And that only leaves one pile left, <laughs> just when you thought there couldn't possibly be any more. Nope, that's wrong. It's the biggest pile that's left, and that is all of these picture frame pieces. My God, there are a lot of these pieces that I just don't even want to don't even want to think about these pieces. Anything with the gold frames, obviously, that's just a quarter of the image and look how much gold frame is on there they're big thick frames and then there's those and then there are also those so that is my biggest pile of pieces by far um and I think, again, when the time comes, there will need to be further sorting on those, perhaps differentiating uh, little things like butterflies on the frame, pearls in the frame, uh, I don't know, like this rose, um, things like that. I'm going to leave that until I actually get to them because I really, really, really want to start on these lovely, lovely portrait pieces. So... Here's what I think I'm going to do uh, first. I think I'm going, I'm not going to bother with the edges just yet. They're there and they're in their own little tin and I can come to them just whenever I'm ready, really. Um, there's no real, in a puzzle this size that I'm doing in bits on bits of foam board, having an edge just really seems a little bit pointless. All I would end up doing is building it and then separating it and just putting it to one side. So I think the edge, I'm just going to leave till at some point later in the puzzle 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the portraits. But I'm not just going to grab a pile of pieces and just do each one in turn. I'm going to um, quite strategically build more than one portrait at a time. Um, and I'll tell you for why. So, for example, when I was tell going through the piles with you, I was saying that I thought that there might be some Sleeping Beauty hair pieces in Rapunzel and vice versa. So rather than just grabbing all the Sleeping Beauty pieces and putting those together and then moving on to Rapunzel, I'm going to grab both of the sets of pieces, put one on one side, one on the other, put them together, put the other ones together, and then any pieces that are left that I have potentially mixed up, I can place in the other picture and I will know then, I'll be able to see more easily and quickly because I'm building them kind of at the same time um, if I have indeed mixed them up. And there are actually a few piles where that could well be the case and probably will be the case. So um, that's just one example. Once all the portraits are done uh, or as done as I can get them using the miscellaneous pieces as well, then I think what I'm going to do is work on probably the, the lights. And after that, I will probably tackle the um, floor pieces. Um, once those are done, um, there will just be wall pieces, really, and frames, as well as the edge. Yeah, so in summary, portraits strategically done so that I'm doing certain piles at the same time, followed by lights, followed by floor, uh, followed by frames, followed by wall. OK, so I'm just going to pause briefly here to uh, point out that I was right regarding um, doing a couple of uh, portraits together so that I um, could easily put in the right picture, whichever one I'd mixed up. And I had actually found quite a few, uh, at least four or five of the Rapunzel pieces in the Sleeping Beauty pieces, which I've popped in. I also found a few of these yellow hair pieces in the Rapunzel pile. Pretty quickly I spotted them because they're actually, if you look a bit closer, a brighter yellow than in Rapunzel's hair. So that was pretty easy to differentiate once I'd actually started building. Another thing that I discovered uh, upon starting, which I didn't really expect, but I'm not surprised by, is that I found in the Sleeping Beauty pile uh, quite a few Winnie the Pooh pieces. They jumped out at me straight away. I think it's because there's a lot in the Sleeping Beauty piles, a lot of dots. These are more obvious kind of further apart dots, but like even the skin is made up of lots of little close together dots. And if you look at the Winnie the Pooh uh, pieces, they are very similar. I think I must have sorted them into that pile early on in the sort before I realized that these ones with the kind of the bigger dots that are a bit closer together um, were in fact Winnie the Pooh. So I've pulled a few of them out. I'm actually going to build Winnie the Pooh alongside these as well as a result of that, um, because I may find some in the Winnie the Pooh pile that belong to Sleeping Beauty, perhaps. Another one, uh, another portrait that I found pieces of in here was Minnie Mouse. Um, now, again, the, the, the skin, this is a Sleeping Beauty bit. Uh, obviously, you've got the lips there, but the skin of Sleeping Beauty is made up of these. It's kind of like a whitish background with kind of brown dots. And Minnie Mouse is very, <clears throat> excuse me, very, very similar. But there's just a subtle difference. And also the outside of Minnie Mouse's face is kind of white with blue circles. Um, and you've got a little bit of a red bow there. So again, I think early on in the sort, before I really kind of became familiar with which pieces the, the Minnie Mouse's ones were, um, I think that they must have got thrown in there, but I've separated those as well. But what I am going to do before I start building Sleeping Beauty is pull out Winnie the Pooh's pieces and also Minnie Mouse's, and I will also build them alongside 
um, alongside Rapunzel and Sleeping Beauty. So uh, the strategy is working so far. I'm pleased with how my strategy is working so far. <laughs> So I'm just stopping just um, to give you a little progress report. I've done uh, quite a few of the pictures now. So we've got Sleeping Beauty. We've got Mickey Mouse. Pocahontas. Dalmatians. We've got Tiana, Simba and Tinkerbell. Winnie the Pooh. Rapunzel. Minnie Mouse and Bambi. And these are... Uh, just a few pieces that were mixed in with um, these three uh, that don't belong with those three. So I have put them to one side. Um, I'm actually uh, pleased with the, the kind of the method that I've adopted in terms of doing sort of two or three portraits at a time, ones with similarities, uh, either in colour or texture or something, um, because um, it sort of worked out the way I had hoped, which is that any that might be in the wrong pile uh, tended to end up going in the other sort of corresponding um, portrait. Um, and that was definitely the case with Mickey Mouse and Pocahontas and also with Dalmatians. And even in some cases, um, I would find pieces in other portraits. So there were three uh, pieces of Minnie Mouse in the Mickey Mouse pile. Minnie Mouse is over here, so she's a bit more complete now. Um, and things like that. So, and then there's a few that just didn't belong in any of these that I've done, and I've just popped them in the relevant piles in the box. I'm starting to get to the point where the portraits aren't as sort of complete as I'm going along. Now, Sleeping Beauty is quite a unique one, so she's pretty much filled out apart from the frame. Um, and the same with Bambi, um, because his background pieces aren't really the same colour as any of the other portraits. So I knew as soon as I found kind of one of these sort of light kind of forest green pieces that it would belong to Bambi. So there aren't many of his missing either. Um, same for Winnie the Pooh. His pieces are really obvious and Rapunzel. Uh, so basically, um, I'm getting to the point now where I'm doing uh, the portraits where there are lots of backgrounds that are similar colour and so they're looking a little bit more gappy um, and I think even though I've not actually tackled all of the portraits yet I think I'm going to go and hit the uh, the miscellaneous pile of pieces so this is my miscellaneous pile I need to turn them all over oh look see already I've found one 
That looks like a Bambi one. I don't know how I missed that. There we go. So yeah, so I'm going to hit this pile of pieces and I'm going to start to separate ones that I think uh, I've missed. And I'll be looking to find pieces like that, for example, where I've got a bit of a gap in Mickey Mouse, where it's kind of white and yellow, and I've just not realised that they're Mickey Mouse pieces. So I'm going to literally go through this whole box of pieces, pick out a bunch that I'm hoping will fill out some of the gaps in these portraits, and then once I've done that, I can move on to um, some more portraits and um, uh, just keep filling them out and getting them all in the right pile. So I'm off to do that now. I won't do that on camera um, and I will come back to you uh, with the results of my quick sort and uh, I'll fill in some gaps for you. OK, so I've been through the miscellaneous pieces. There's still quite a few in there, but I've lowered the pile quite a lot. I'm just going to go through what I've pulled out. And this is probably the biggest pile. These are sort of greyish, sort of white background pieces um, that will more than likely go either in Mickey, Pocahontas or the Dalmatians. And I think I'll probably get rid of quite a few of those on uh, those three portraits. Any that aren't quite right, I'll just throw back in the box. Uh, but I've pulled those out. These are other ones that I think belong with Mickey. Mostly yellow pieces, but some black pieces where um, I've got gaps in his ears and things like that. So um, that should hopefully fill Mickey out a little more. I found three pieces that belong to Tiana. Uh, they go in the Bambi picture. Uh there are quite a few extras that I've added to the Tinkerbell pile, quite a lot of sort of background pieces for her, but also some of her um some of her body as well, some like some of her legs uh pieces that I was missing. And these are uh ones I pulled out where I just recognised what pile this should have gone in. Um so I'm just gonna add these to uh the existing piles that are in the boxes, and then I'm gonna try and fill out the portraits that I have already started. Okay, so I have had a go at 17 portraits so far. There are 26 in total. So I've got nine more to have a go at. Uh, a lot of them are pretty complete. Bambi's fairly complete. Mickey's almost there. Uh, Dalmatians and Sleeping Beauty are pretty complete. Uh, the really bitty ones are the ones I've done more recently. Ones like Ursula, Pinocchio and Ariel. Although I've got more of Ariel than I thought I had, to be honest. Um, Tinkerbell's still a little bit gappy as well. And I think I might find quite a few of those pieces in the Dumbo pile. They're, 
The thing is with the Dumbo pile is it's one of those pictures that's got lots of colours in it and it's got yellow, green, pink, grey, blue. It's got all kinds of colours in it and I think that colours have been thrown in there that actually belong to especially Pinocchio because what you've also got with Pinocchio is these bold, almost like crayon lines and you have quite stark, dark lines as well in Dumbo. So I think I will find probably a few in that pile. Same might go for Ariel. She's got really dark kind of black lines around her because of the, the style which she's been drawn in uh, or painted. So I think I might find a few in there, but before I move on to Dumbo and the Aristocat, and probably Captain Hook as well, he's quite colourful, um, I'm going to tackle the miscellaneous pile again. I'm going to raid the miscellaneous pile. It's kind of the way I'm doing it. I sort of do a bunch of portraits, raid the miscellaneous pile, fill in some gaps, do a bunch more portraits, and now it's time for me to raid this pile again. I know for a fact... That, let's see, I found one already, look. Yeah, definitely need to read this this pile here and um, try and fill out some gaps. And then once I've done that, I will move on to my next set of portraits, which will be Dumbo the Aristocat and Captain Hook.
Right, so I have been through every single one of these gold frame pieces, every one of them. And what I have done is I have separated out, I was specifically looking for pieces that I could find with both frame and portrait in it. Because it's obvious from looking at the portraits that there are still some bits at the edge that I haven't filled in. And it's because pieces like this, for example, which I think is part of the Cinderella picture... I'll show you here so it's a bit more clear. Uh, pieces like this have been thrown into the frame box at, rather than the portrait uh, piles of pieces when I was sorting. And um, really, this is the only unfinished aspect of the portraits now. So what I wanted to do was go through all of those and take out any piece I could find that was like that, that still had a little bit of the portrait in it. And I found quite a few. I mean, this is quite a lot of those gold pieces that I've managed to separate out. Now, there are, there are some, like, for example, this one, which could well be frame and wall, but there are portraits where this kind of colour, this turquoisey colour, is also part of the background colour of the portrait, like in um, The Little Mermaid, for example, and in Tinkerbell, where I've pulled them out because I just wasn't sure, and I figure if... If it does turn out to be a wall piece, then I'll just throw it in the other pile where I've got wall and frame pieces. I also separated out any pieces that were like part frame and part wall. I really just needed to go through these again and just separate them down because there were so many. And I mean, even still, uh, where the whole piece is covered in gold, there are still a lot. And I will have to do some more separating down. So my next job will be to put these into the portraits. I will sort this into piles, kind of portrait by portrait, as far as I can. Uh, or perhaps colour by colour, and then I'll whack a few of the portraits onto the table, put them in, and then uh, get them back on the boards.
So that concludes part one of the Disney uh, Museum puzzle build. I, um, as I said at the start, my intention in this one was to focus purely on the pictures of the Disney characters. And when I say just the pictures, I mean not the frame as well, just the actual portraits themselves. Um, there are still a lot of frame pieces, a lot of gold pieces and a lot of kind of gold and green pieces where the frame and the wall are kind of on the same piece. There's still loads of those left and I think that's going to take a little while to tackle. So they'll be coming up in part two. Uh, but focusing on what I've been doing in this video, I think that final uh, reshuffle and resort through the gold frame pieces that I did, looking for little kind of edges of the portraits, that has really um, filled these out. And they're about as done as I can get them now. Um, it really, uh, in the end, just became a case of hunting for these pieces in the other piles that I had. Um, and eventually I was sort of, I did, had done so many uh, reshuffles through the piles that I had that um, I think continuing on to try and find the tiny little bits that I've missed uh, would, would have just been a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack really. Um, and I, you know, all of those resorts and things like that, they, uh, they took a toll in the end because <laughs> it was quite tiring. But I did learn a lesson from it though. I found that when I was doing, because this has been so sorting intensive, this puzzle, there's been a lot of sorting that's happened, um, I found that I was doing it not in ideal conditions. Um, so the, the lesson I've learned really is to uh, just be more efficient with my resorts and with my reshuffles because it was a case of, I was getting so bored with the sorting, <laughs> I'd be sitting on the sofa doing it and, um, you know, there'd be some kind of repeated series that I've seen in the background on the TV. And, you know, it would just be the light in the room uh, that I was working by and sometimes it was late. Uh, so I think part of the reason really uh, that it took so long and that I just continually would miss them and have to re-go through them again uh, was just because I I just wasn't doing it in ideal conditions. I was distracted, I was tired, I wasn't really taking breaks. Um, and when you're looking for pieces with like tiny little bits of colour where you have to really look, um, you know, concentrate on the pieces to be able to spot them and when you look or when you're looking for maybe minute variances in color between say black and really dark green when you're doing that it's a real strain on the eyes and I think I just didn't give myself enough breaks from it and actually recently I have been getting the occasional headache and it's just occurred to me that that might be part of the reason <laughs> could have been other things I suppose but you know I think the lesson that I've learned from that is to just be smart with the resorting and the reshuffles and to do it under proper light and then I wouldn't have to do it quite as often and it wouldn't take quite so long. So that was really kind of the most challenging aspect of this part of the puzzle for me. Um, I would say once I was organised, um, initially with when I was um, going away at the, the initial piles of portrait pieces that I had, initially they went down really fast. The portraits came together really quickly. And um, I only really slowed down when I had to start looking for just gap pieces or edge pieces that just weren't so easy to find. Um, so in actual fact, there was nothing I can really say it was especially difficult about this part of the build. There were no, there was no kind of one portrait that was like super hard to build over the others. Um, I think the challenging part for me was... Um, was just all those kind of sorts and resorts and things like that. But that doesn't really kind of say anything about the difficulty level of the puzzle. It's just it's just part of the organisation process, I think, that I just didn't really tackle very efficiently. But um, I would say if I was to pick a, a, a kind of a hardest portrait, I would say probably um, Tinkerbell, Ariel and Ursula. Uh, were the ones I struggled with the most and the reason for that is because there were there were some portraits where the pieces in them were either very similar to other portraits or very similar in colour to um, 
say the wall pieces um, and things like that. So like for, I'll, I'll give you an example. So Bambi was really easy. I found the pieces for him really easy and I put them together really easily. And, you know, there were only kind of two missing that I very quickly found, I think, when I'd finished him. He just has a colour background that isn't the same as any of the others and it isn't the same as any of the kind of the background. And so he was just fairly straightforward to put together. The same with Sleeping Beauty. There was a little bit of mixing of the piles with Sleeping Beauty because of all the dots, but she was quite a unique portrait and, you know, there was no real confusion with the other portraits. Tinkerbell, Ursula and Ariel all have different shades of kind of turquoise and dark green, which are not only similar to each other, but they are also very similar to the shades of the wall in the background. And I found they had the most gaps throughout and it really was kind of a task in the end looking for the gaps uh, in those portraits, the, the pieces, you know, that would fill in the gaps. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have worried about it so much if I wasn't filming it for YouTube. You know, I think if I felt that they were done as far as I could do them and it was just taking too long resorting through to find these gap pieces, I probably would have, if I wasn't filming it, I probably would have just left it and moved on and they would have revealed themselves as and when. But because I'm doing a video purely on the portraits, I wanted to just make them as finished as I possibly could. So, um, so you know, if you are doing this puzzle or you have it and you're going to do it, uh, that's maybe something that won't be necessary for you to do and that you don't really need to kind of stress about. But um, I am glad. I'm glad that they're mostly filled out now, that I've kind of managed to sort that out. Another thing, actually, that was um, a wee bit difficult was... Um, portraits with areas of black in them. So Ariel was one. Um, the Aristocat had a few black pieces in and also Pinocchio had a little patch with black pieces in. And again, it became necessary to um, shuffle through the pile of wall, dark green wall pieces. And also um, the floor had some quite dark pieces in as well. So um, good colour perception helps <laughs> when you're doing this as well, because the shades are so minute sometimes it's just really easy to miss them um but yeah so i would say if i was to pick out harder portraits above you know all the rest i would say ursula tinkerbell and um ariel probably for that reason were the more difficult ones but they were fun i mean they were still fun to do i loved doing the portraits like when i got started when i finally done all the sorting and i got started i just loved putting them all together and seeing them all, you know, come together and having all the pictures on my puzzle table and everything, it was just, it was a joy. It was a real, real um, joy. And I, I'm actually, I was daunted by the other parts of the puzzle, the, all the frames and the floor and the ceiling. I was really daunted by them because uh, they're big piles of pieces. But having done all the resorts and things like that, I don't think that's been a waste of time um, because I really do have more of a sense now of what the pieces are like, what the differentiating factors are. So, you know, when I do come to build these in the next half, I will um, definitely have a better idea and I don't feel quite as intimidated by them now. I'm actually really looking forward to them as well. Um, so this is probably a puzzle that's taken the most organisation. Uh, like, I mean, I do with these big puzzles, I do have to be quite methodical. It's just the way I have to do them, partially for space reasons, because I have to kind of organise and be able to build it in bits on boards. Um, but not only that, just just to make it a bit easier really and to make it easier to film and things like that so I do have to be methodical but I really this, it, this has been next level organization this puzzle <laughs> so, um so yeah uh if you don't particularly like being overly organized <laughs> you know maybe think about that um but I do have extra considerations in terms of filming the thing as well so you know that I kind of have to do that but um yeah I, f I am finding that the resorts and things have actually really helped me get to grips with how the frames are going to come together and what the differences are between them and things like that so that's really helped um 
So yeah, I'm going to give you a sneak peek now of what the puzzle looks like as is. So I actually, I started this puzzle on the 17th of January and it's the 4th of February today. I haven't just done the portraits at this point. I have actually built the floor and I've built the ceiling, um, but I'm not going to... Uh, do show you that footage until the second half but what I will show you is what the puzzle looks like at the moment all together because I actually I managed to kind of clear a space just just about big enough to put the foam boards together and I tried to um lay the portraits out roughly where they're supposed to go and the edge is a little bit floaty I haven't really kind of properly done the edge yet so that looks a bit odd but you do the, the floor and the ceiling are there and you do get a sense of um what the puzzle is gonna kind of look like. Um, but it's still very, because of it being it's a, being a collage puzzle, essentially, it's still very, um, it's not very cohesive quite yet. You know, there aren't many bits kind of attaching to each other yet. Um, but you do get with that floor and ceiling uh, and with the portraits kind of roughly in place, you do get a bit more of a sense of what it's gonna look like. So here's a, just a sneak peek of that. Um, and that gives you some idea as well of what's coming in the next video. I am going to start working on the frames next. So once they're done, it's really going to, um, it's it's really going to look like a proper whole puzzle then. Um, because after that, really, it's just filling in the wall, the wall pieces. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely getting there with them. Definitely getting there with it. Still, it's very floaty and bitty at the minute. Um, but it, you know, I'm properly like I've probably made a dent in this puzzle now so uh yeah so that will be coming up in part two um I'm just gonna uh, sorry I'm just gonna have a quick look at my iPad because I've written a whole kind of script for this outro and I lose where I am um so yeah I think I think I've covered everything so <laughs> It's really just to say um, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, uh, feel free to um, pop a like on the video. Um, if you haven't subscribed um, and you would and you have enjoyed it, then by all means hit that subscribe button and you'll know then as soon as part two drops as well. Thank you so much to uh, my existing subscribers. I am actually... Um, I'm actually fast approaching 500 subscribers now, which is way beyond my expectations. And I really do truly appreciate the support for the channel. So thank you so much for that. I was thinking maybe if and when I reach a thousand subs, I'll have a go, I'll buy and have a go at a really big puzzle. Uh, I've got my eye on the Educa wildlife puzzle, which is like 33,000 and something pieces. Um, so yeah, maybe that could be my, my 1000 subscriber goal, but I, chuffed chuffed to bits with with almost 500 subscribers i'm so so pleased so thank you so much for that and yeah that's it that's the end of the video i will see you uh for part two of the disney museum but in the meantime uh stay safe and happy puzzling <laughs>